Let's do some kingpin bushings. <laughs> I got a project I'm about to start that I'm going to show you guys, but before I can, I need to get these bushings uh, knocked out so that I can put another set of bushings in here for my new kingpins. So, uh, early Ford kingpins are .814. This one says it's for all A, B, and V8 Ford Mercury cars and V8 half-ton light delivery trucks. So. There you go. That's the size you need if you're looking for one on eBay. You can find these from time to time. This one with this kit, that is, that's helpful because it makes it a lot easier putting the bushings in. Don't have to have it. You can just go with the reamer and knock the bushings in by hand with a hammer and some other stuff. Whatever you can figure it you know, out to use, you know, like a, a socket or something like that. But this one's really handy because it has it's stepped to go down inside that bushing. So again, 814 is the reamer size, and that's what you need for early Ford 28 to 48. I've got a set of kingpins here that we're going to use for mock-up. Got the kingpins. All the little the bearings, the steering stops, all the little felts and cups there. And that kit I had was missing some bushings. So I got some new bronze bushings from 3rd Gen. It's a B3109-ST. And that's going to be the bushings for 28-41 Ford. These are 39s. So we're going to crank them suckers in there. I have this cool little tool here. This is a kingpin bushing reamer. And this is the little tool to hammer them in and hammer them out. That's going to fit right down inside there. And we can knock that sucker out of there. And we can also use that to install the new ones. So let's knock these out. Let's see if we can get up here. These are just some, some rough old. These are just some rough old spindles I have that I'm just going to use for mock-up, but I'm going to end up cleaning them up later on and really want. I want to be able to use these on something. Someone welded a steering arm on here and they really, they did some booger welds on it, but I'm going to clean it up and slick it up and make it look nice. And I really like that. It looks like it was a chunk of a, an actual Pittman arm because it's a lot thinner than a than your steering arms down here. Get this stuff out here and ready to go. Now, on these spindles, let me show you this one. This one's a crusty one. It's going to get wire wheeled. On these spindles, there's a hole there in that bushing, and that's going to match up with that grease cert. So you want to make sure when you press that in that you line that up before you press it in there. Because otherwise you're going to have to knock it back out and press it back in again and line it up. So Let's knock these out. Hopefully this, that will hold that and I won't knock it. bushing that little piece is stepped right there you can see it stepped it well huh. you can go down in that one that's funny I guess I'll have to knock it in that way there we go that one's knocked out okay that's good we're gonna knock her in You don't have to have this tool, by the way. You can use a socket or whatever you want that will fit right inside that, right inside that hole there. Actually, 
actually, you know what? It'd probably be easier if I had a piece of something flat. Still lined up good. Muy bueno. And I'm just going to knock it flush with the top of that. I'll use this piece of plate to hammer that in because it's trying to flare that out. Hang on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna flush that, flush that up with the, the bottom of that like it was from the factory. There we go. Grease cert matches. Opening good. Okay. Now we've got to cut those bushings to match these kingpins because these kingpins don't go in there. So this reamer has a square cog on the end and this end is going to fit inside there and it doesn't. That's awesome. So how am I going to do that? That's awesome. That's supposed to fit down inside there. It's supposed to be just a little smaller so it can fit in there and line up. And it's not. Another set of bushings here. Not sure where they came from, but. This is, I just checked this with my mic, and this is eight thousandths. This is an eight one, eight one four is the size of the early Ford Kingpin, the size of that. So this needs to be eight one four here and smaller here, and it's actually eight point uh, eight, and this is point. 814 and see that right there shows you that those will fit so I'm going to knock those Chinese bearings out and use this other bag of bearings that's actually a actual Ford bearing those are RP 105 kingpin bearings well it is what it is the old Chinese ones just suck as usual so let me knock these out of there and we'll start over with the bearings different set of bearings I'll have to find some USA ones I don't know where these bearings came from but we're gonna try to use them <laughs> now that's flared out you can't even get it in there Gonna knock it out anyway, whether it likes it or not. Throw those bearings in the trash. How about that?
foster. Now let's start over again. That's a four bearing, that's a junk bearing. There's junky, brand new bearing. Oh, missed that one. Hold on. Okay, we'll line that up again and we'll put that in there, see if we can turn that down. Line that hole up with that grease dirt. We won't have any problem getting it out. Let's see if that'll go in there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what you want right there. And then those that ream will ream that one as we go through the other. Okay. Man, we're cooking on all eight cylinders now with some bacon grease. Man, we're running on all eight now. up good in there grab another one of those I have no idea where these came from they were just in a clear plastic bag they may have actually they may have been the ones that came with that were supposed to come with this and I just found them get that one loaded in there That should have been my first clue right there because that tapered or that stepped part fits right inside that one perfectly and the other one it doesn't doesn't even go in there either end so that's probably a junk one too right there anyway we'll use that one get her down in there I'm gonna take that greaser out real quick and clean it out oh yeah old junk there we go yep look like a little rat poop it's out Perfect. Now we're good. Still hitting on all eight here. So we're gonna Okay, there we go. Now see how that one that other bushing there is gonna line that hone up or that reamer is gonna line that see how that works? And that other bushing it's not cut is going to line up the reamer for this one so we'll get this one get it cut and then what we'll do is we'll spin this sucker around and run it through here and cut that one or that or we'll turn it around 180 degrees so it'll get a little bit easier okay we got our five eighths i gotta put some pressure i'll have to put pressure on this reamer as i twist it to go through there so I'm gonna end up having to do it like this and 
I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me get you down here closer. It's gonna be a little hard to see for you guys, but uh, because of that steering arm's in the way, but as I push, you can see it. It's cutting that bronze bushing. I just gotta keep pressure on it as I turn it. And you really can't do it without a glove because it will chew your hand up. filled up the greaser greaser hole now you can see take you guys down let me get this backed out of here let me take it backwards Now you see right there how shiny that bushing is. There is another one. So it, it's really perfect. So let's take this one out and we'll flip it over and we'll start again. Actually, you know what? Let's check that. Oh, that's perfect. No wiggle at all. Awesome. Actually, I need to pull that greaser back off there now. <laughs> That's right, we'll do it later. Hey, you might be able to see this one better. Okay, let's get that in there. Awesome. And that's just going to line that up and keep her straight. See the little bits falling out? This is pretty easy to do. You don't, I mean, you can have a machine shop do it. I usually have, I've had Sid, Sid drops my axles, so a lot of times I'll have, I'll just swap him out for a stock set of um, spindles and let him ream them and put a set of kingpins in when I get a, a dropped axle. But in this case, I got my dropped axle from him, but I don't have, I don't have, uh, but I don't have my, I didn't have my spindle, so I just got the axle from him. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That looks nice and pretty. Look at this. There you go. You see that one, and you can see through that one. Maybe get all over my hands, probably. Yeah, it's a little, still a little tight. But I'd rather knock that sucker in and it be tight. There you go. Then it go whoop, whoop, whoop. So, that'll work. Well, I knocked that in there, now I can't get it out. Awesome. Okay, that one's done. Okay, round two. Let's see if we can knock this sucker out. 
It's kind of a janky looking spindle. There's a lot of surface rust on it. bit of a that looked like it was pinged in there. Okay, there we go. You ready? Sorry if I'm messing you guys up there. I'm probably vibrating pretty good. Whoa. Got that one there. Hop right in there. All right. Chunk of junk in there. That old grease, that old grease gets, it'll get hard. Kind of dry out, lose its, it'll lose its, uh, kind of, for lack of better terms, liquidness. This is a chunk of, oof, like a booger. There we go. And it's got a two. Hang on just a second. Line up the hole, and those that's evenly spaced. You see it's evenly spaced on there, so you can just line up the hole. And then uh, we'll hammer that sucker in there. Okay, put that back in. Here we go. Pal. Yeah, you really need to do these before you paint because you see how I'm clamping this deck and thing. Man. I don't know about you, but man, messing around painted stuff just mm, wears me out. Stresses me out too. Another little chunk there. Throw that on the floor and step on it later and take it home with me. Goodbye, cruel world. There you go. You can see how that skin up that spindle. But we're going to wire wheel that. And that's going to be good to go anyway. Probably blast it at some point, maybe. So, there you go. Ready to go. Let's ream it. Y'all still recording? Okay, we're good. good. I seen you blinking right at me. So that's good. Ooh, seen that pop through there. Okay. That's good to go. A little bit more. There we go. You have to back it out the opposite direction because otherwise it'll it turns and pulls itself back through. Ooh, that looks pretty. I like that. Yeah, nice and pretty. Look at that. Let's do the other one. better 
you don't push it, it just kind of wants to stay in one little spot, even though it's pulling itself a little bit. So, give that hand a push. Good catch. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Looby dooby on the kingpin. Oh, yeah. Oh, that went in a lot better. Look at that. There you go. Dunky. Ready to go in the car. All right. There you go, guys. New kingpins in the early Ford spindles. These are 37 to 41, I believe. 42, they went to the square back. Same exact principle. Same exact principle for the 28 to 36 is also. Same thing. You just got to get the appropriate spindles for them. The early spindles, like for uh, 32, 30, 33, 34, are a little bit different. First of all, this one had a cup on it that was removed. And this is actually an old Ford kingpin. You see the hole for the rod. That's the rod that uh, went down in there for the mechanical brakes. But on the early spindles, let's see if I have one. This is a, I believe this is a 36. 32 to 36. Let's see. Let's look real quick. This is an early one. This is a 30. This is a 33, 34 spindle. And when you put this on the axle, your bearing actually goes on top, and then your kingpin goes down like like that. And that cup, this one's not reamed. It's got some old junk in there. But anyway, the old cup set on top of that bearing. So. When they went to the later style ones, the 30, I think 35 and up, they actually put the bearing down here, down low, and then the axle set on it, so it pushed, the spindle pushed up on that bearing. So, little tidbit, if you don't mind running the early spindles, you can get that much lower, which is about a half inch. So, you can, I mean, half in, everything, <laughs> everything helps when you're trying to get them low. This car that I'm building, I'm going to use these for mock-up, but I'm going to use the early spindles to get it down low. So, a little tidbit for you guys. But there you go, 39 spindles, ready to go on an axle. I'll clean that one up, clean that one up a little bit, and we'll put some backing plates on it. We'll be gone. So, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. See you later.